Well, hello again, everybody. This is John Norris at Trading Perspectives. As always, we have our very good friend, Sam Clement. Sam, say hello. Hey, John. You doing okay today? Doing awesome. How are you doing? I'm doing absolutely fantastic, as are the markets and as are U.S. equity investors. Doing absolutely fantastic. And the reason for it, Sam, is despite all the bad economic data, the stock market really, since what, in the middle of March, or the last week of March has gone in one direction, Straight and that's up. mostly up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know we've had a couple of negative days and what have you. And regardless of the headlines, and the headlines have just been atrocious. I mean, you know, people are walking around staring at their navels. I mean, it's if it's not the COVID nineteen, then it's riots. It's there's no good news. It doesn't seem like, and yet for some reason, investors feel fantastic. I can't make hiding her hair out of this, Sam. What are your thoughts? Well, I, all of this kind of brings me back to that picture is kind of a screenshot of the, the Jim Cramer show after the market closes and, and the title at the bottom said, uh, worst economy in years. And, and the picture said Dow rallies best in <laughs> in 100 years. So <laughs> it's it's just been odd. There's There's been abysmal economic data. I mean, more jobs lost in one week than all the Great Recession in 2008, and and a worse weekly claims number than the Great Depression, and and since the end of March, like you said, it's just been up and up and up with just a, a handful of down days. So and and, it, and you know and also what's crazy about this is you're absolutely right on everything you just said. It's hard to find many analysts that would sit there and say this is an app. This is a recipe for continued go 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 go. You read. You know, commentary out of Goldman. You read commentary out of just about any firm, and they're sure. like going, well, "It's going to take us ten years to get back to normal in the economy." You know, no one really knows what the earnings season looks like, and but for all this liquidity the Fed's uh, yeah. throwing around, this would really be horrible. And you know, there's some folks that we follow on Twitter, and one is a guy by the name of Sven Hein Henrich. I, I think that's how you pronounce it at Northman Trader. And he just sits there, sits there and comes out with stuff and like going, "Really?" On, and on Sunday night, he said, uh, "The world's a world's uh, you know falling apart. The U.S. is is burning and futures are up." Yeah. <laughs> so Somebody is still buying. <laughs> Someone is still buying, and I guess that just is. There's so much liquidity out there. There's so much cash floating about in the financial markets. It has to go somewhere. And it doesn't seem as though U.S. investors are that crazy about taking uh, taking down a bunch of debt right now that's paying next to nothing. So the path of, path of least resistance, Sam, seems to be U.S. stocks. Yeah, well, I, I think the thing is for when the market was selling off and even a little while after, you know, some people were calling this the most hated rally for a while. I saw and, that. And that, that kind of meant you looked at money market funds and how much basically people were putting the cash, how much people were selling putting in the cash and that was growing higher and higher and higher and higher for weeks even when the market was rallying and and, and just now recently we've seen that kind of turn we've seen the the total money market funds dropping a little bit and i think part of that is like you said this money just has to go somewhere and the fed's put more money into the economy the fed is priced in earnings that maybe won't be there in a couple of years and and that's made the stock prices go to those levels expecting earnings that may not even be there and it, and it's just money has to go somewhere i mean it, it it sounds like it shouldn't be that simple but it i think it kind of is and money has to go somewhere you know and i think you might be right but even so i mean it does have sort of a alice falling through the looking glass sort of type type vibe to it it doesn't make a lot of sense for people that are been doing investments that want to use their gray matter that god gave them and and analyze the markets and come up with good good buy signals and good sell, sell signals because the powers that be have completely eliminated these from the markets for the time being. It's impossible to know, okay, when to buy and when to sell because money just keeps being dumped in the financial markets. It's got to go somewhere. And, you know, that guy I just mentioned, Sven Henrich or Heinrich, again, apologize, Northman Trader, this is what he just uh, tweeted over. And then all 40 million unemployed struck it rich buying calls. <laughs> with their Robin Hood accounts and never had to work again and all lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Which I think is kind of appropriate because, yeah, I mean, the rallies, listen, it feels great. Clients aren't aren't upset. Everyone's feeling good about themselves. Got a little bit more money. Maybe that helps to spur economic growth and what have you. But Sam, you and I are sitting there trying to, trying to make sense out of this and we're t- taking a look at a stock market that's trading at 21 times past earnings 
and is trading one is trading at 21 times expected earnings, understanding that no one knows what expected earnings are going to be because no companies are giving guidance any longer. That's the thing. We're <laughs> 21 times looking backwards, and, then, and that's <laughs> that's negating the fact that we don't know what is in the future. And, you know, we still are not all the way back. Here we are in the first week of June of the last month of, of the second quarter. We essentially have April was a complete lockdown. May was, I'd say, 65 70% lockdown. June is probably going to be about, by, by the time the dust settles and the smoke clears, about 50% lockdown. I don't even, I mean, it's going to be hard to put a, a, a number on the second quarter GDP number that doesn't look completely ugly. The Bureau of Labor Statistics is going to announce on Friday that the economy shed some number of millions of jobs. Right now, Wall Street is anticipating that the unemployment rate goes up to 19.8% the last I saw. And we have riots across the country like I have not seen in my life, at yeah. least not that I can remember. Mm -hmm. Not just not just in one place, in so many different countries. Even here in Birmingham, the, the disturbances that we had in Birmingham barely got any national attention, which they normally do, because there's so much happening everywhere else. The world is aflame. We're, we're tearing ourselves asunder. We're rending ourselves asunder. And yet, the market's up again today. Yeah, well, I've, I've heard the term, the world is falling apart, and it kind of feels like it is when you look at the news and if you read the top headlines. And we're down, I think, less than 6% now in the S&P year to date. Oh, heavens yes. I mean, the market fell apart, expecting the worst. And you know what? I mean, as far as economic data, we kind of did get the worst. We got the worst we've ever had. So I, I think the that worst kinda, we've ever had yeah. I mean, might not still be the but, worst. But, but my point remains is, is we're down 6%, not even. Yeah, that's a normal. That's a normal kind of down year, slowing the economy. Not <laughs> that's a, that's 2018. Yeah, that's not when the market was. I mean, the yeah. stock. I mean, and, when the economy and, is and, actually growing. And the fears around 20, 2018 are still here. <laughs> if if not, I think I think not the bigger issue. Yeah, I think I think the ch issues going on with China are are bigger now and more worrisome to me <laughs> than they were in 2018. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot more depth to the the division between China and the United yeah. States right now, in my opinion. Um, everything with Hong Kong, that's such a hot topic yeah. between the two countries, and, and that's just getting worse and worse, and, you know, removing their special trading status with the United States, and all those fears are still here, and then we add on 40 million lost jobs on top of it, <laughs> and we're down less than we were in 2018, and it's still going up. It's up, what, another 150 points as we're recording this? It's, uh, it's, it's one for the ages. It truly is, and, you know, Everyone that does what Sam and I do for a living wants to really paint a rosy picture, or as rosy a picture as is possible. You know, most, well, maybe not all of us. There's some people out there that sell negativity and they're, they're perma bears, but most people want to be positive that I know, that I like to surround myself with people that have a rosier outlook than a negative outlook. I want people that say we're going to grow. I, I want to make money. I don't want to lose money. I want our clients to make money. We want all of this stuff. But as Sam, is, as our investment committee has spoken, as we've tell, told our client advisors, as we've told our, our, our clients, we're still sitting on a decent amount of cash due to the fact that this really doesn't make much sense. But for the fact the money's got to go somewhere and it's sort of a FOMO type of rally fear of missing out yeah I, I think in my opinion the biggest thing is still just the Federal Reserve and what they've done and that is all kind of wrapped into the same answer um, as the money's pumping into the market from the Federal Reserve people have to put it somewhere and that's making stuff go up which is creating this kind of FOMO rally so I think it is all kind of but the Fed's kind of juicing the market up right now it seems like <laughs> I mean, well the thing is I mean it, when if you want to view the world as glass is half full I'd prefer people to do it. Yeah. However, if you want to view the world as glass is half empty, we have to sit back and take a look at what happens if all these PPP loans aren't forgiven. All of a sudden, banks are stuck with a bunch of 1% five-year paper tying up capital. What happens on the end of July when all this extra $600 in weekly unemployment expires at the, from the federal level? Are yeah. we going to re-up that, or, or is that, that going to go bye-bye? And then what happens to all these 40 million people that all of a sudden – go back to 
eating mayonnaise sandwiches. Yeah, I think I think the market is kind of pricing that these people are all just furloughed when yeah. things get back to normal. And that's what my point was. Yeah, so when things get back to normal, everyone will have their job back. Those forty million will drop down to five uh, percent unemployment. Yeah. But the thing is, oh, we're okay with six or seven. Yeah, you know, I'm, just, I've looked at some of these these large companies that are that are closing locations that are, you know, consolidating. You're seeing companies doing early retirement and severance packages for people so that they can not have to come back with that same amount of jobs that they had before. And, and all of that to be said, it's, I don't think we're going back to even six or 7% unemployment for the time being, because that's almost like the start of a new economy. These new businesses have to start up and that takes time. That can take years for us to get back down to a, a, a even a single digit level of unemployment. Well, I, I, I hear you and I agree with you. And folks, yesterday, Sam and I and another co-worker, uh, another Sam here, went to have lunch. Thai restaurant here in Birmingham. And it finally reopened. You could sit inside and all that stuff. Sam, how many tables were there in that restaurant? I mean, we were the only people in there. Five or six. Yeah. You know, it's 12 o'clock. This is a popular restaurant, or it certainly was before the pandemic. I mean, there's only a few tables there. There were only that, a few tables. could and, sit at. And only one wait staff. How long does this go on? Yeah. I, I don't think anyone can answer that question, but if it does go on another two or three months, all those people that used to wait there are still not fully employed, mm-hmm. their unemployment benefits are running out, and we get a real ugly-looking third quarter, which I don't think anyone has been predicting up until this point. Everyone's forecasting, if not a V-shaped reco- economic recovery, if you're hearing a lot about the Nike swoosh and all that stuff. What if it's more like a ladle, you know, I mean, yeah. so whoop, whoop, and then sideways? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. So this is this is where I think investors really need to maybe reassess what their risk tolerance is in their investment portfolios. It's felt great. You know, we've made back a, a lot, if not most of the money that we lost in February and the first part of March. We've made it back due to the fact that it's just liquidity, uh, a liquidity fueled fear of missing out rally. Are you good with that? Are you good with having a higher than normal uh, equity allocation? Do you want to strap on some more risk? Or are you going to sit there and say, you know, I'm okay for right now. I want to, I want to see if the other shoe drops. Uh, I want to see what's on the other side of this. And I'm okay missing 5% upside. I'm okay yeah. missing 10% yeah. upside. I'm okay with that because I'd rather, I'd rather see the return of my principal sure. than the return on it, if you catch my yeah. drift. And I think, yeah. I, th- I think, Sam, given the way that the market has behaved recently in, in the face of just absolutely atrocious economic data, I think we might be an inflection point where investors, in, at least in the United States, need to ask themselves those questions. I mean, you know, you know, risk tolerance, it's hard to not get kind of out of line when we have a historical long bull market. You know, I think everyone starts to creep up. You know, you yeah. know, even just just naturally because those assets are growing and and the stocks are growing more than the bonds over those ten years that their risk tolerance goes up. But even besides that, people say they just see it keep kind of ticking up and ticking up and ticking up, and it, it gets harder and harder to not want to get in on that rally. And so you have these times like fourth quarter of 2018 and first and kind of second quarter of this year and those kind of help reevaluate what your risk tolerance is because everyone wants to be up 20 plus percent sure they do. but most of those people probably don't want to be down 20 percent if the market's down 20 <laughs> percent trust me no they don't <laughs> <laughs> so so that's that's um one purpose of, of these kind of pullbacks and it's volatility shakeups is it helps people kind of readjust what their actual risk tolerance is well, there you go. I think you've I think you've kind of summed it up nicely. I think we've kind of maybe tied up some loose ends with it. Everyone out there that's listening, I mean, this is a weird time, not just in the U.S. economy and markets, but in the global economy and markets. Yep. Uh, we're at basic inflection points. We've spoken here in the past about how we believe China is going to exert some greater muscle, how Europe might struggle coming out of this, how the developed world is going to be s- saddled with an enormous amount of debt, how the rich world is going to have a difficult time with the poor world, how the emerging markets, while some people are bullish on them, I'm trying to come up with, with, with a scenario where slower economic growth is, is good for resource-dependent uh, economies like you would find in mm-hmm. much of the emerging markets where protectionism, which I think we'll see coming out of this, is good for um, emerging markets as you know, uh, economies like the United States, Canada, and others um, onshore more, more uh, industries and jobs. 
at least to some degree, at least mechanize them. And uh, it's a really weird time. And I think uh, history books will look back on the year 2020 and go, wow, that was a weird year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so with that. No kidding. So with that, guys, thank you all so much for listening. We'd love to hear from you all. So if you have any questions or comments, please let us know. You can always send us an email to tradingperspectives at oakworthcapital.com, where you can leave us a review on the podcast outlet of your choice. If, you're interested in, if you are interested in hearing more or reading more of what we have to say, you can check out our blog, Common Sense, at Oakworth Capital, underneath the Thought Leadership tab, along with a lot of other interesting articles, we think. And then also uh, be sure to scroll down to the New Normal series that we've, that we've been working on, and we're going to finish up over the next couple of weeks here at uh, Oakworth, what does the new normal look like once we come out of this? With that, Sam, I'm going to give you one last chance. That's all I got. That's all I've got today, too. Y'all take care.